In this video, we're going to solve a few word problems using proportions. In this first example, Sandra is interviewing patients for a high blood pressure intervention program. Yesterday, 17 out of 50 patients qualified for the program. If Sandra will interview 830 patients this month, how many should she expect will qualify for the program? When we set up the proportion, we're looking for two situations that have similar quantities in each situation. In this case, we have the small scale, which would be in one day, 17 out of 50 patients qualified. And then we have in the larger scale that we have a total of 830 patients. And we're interested in how many from that group will qualify. Let's set up the first ratio, 17 out of 50. When I'm doing proportion problems, I think it's a good idea to actually write out the units or what these numbers refer to. 17 over 50 in this case is 17 patients that qualified out of a total of 50 patients. It's a very helpful move to make sure that we understand what units these numbers represent because our second ratio must have the identical units. We must have a number that represents how many patients qualify in the numerator and the total number of patients in the denominator. So in this case, if one ratio is 17 over 50, the other one must be x over 830, using x for how many patients will qualify out of this larger group of 830. Usually, the quickest way to solve proportions is to multiply diagonally in one direction, and know that that will equal your result from multiplying diagonally in the other direction. I'll multiply first 17 times 830, and it does not matter which diagonal you choose first. 17 times 830, 14,110. Multiplying diagonally the other way, 50 times x is 50x. And these two results of the multiplication are equal to each other. 14,110 equals 50x. We've turned this proportion into an equation that has no fractions, and now we'll finish solving. Get this x by itself, this linear equation. We'll divide both sides by 50. The 50s will cancel. We're left with x equals 282.2. So we could say that Sanders should expect about 282 patients will qualify. Here's an example for you to try. We'll solve it using similar steps with our proportion. Set up one ratio with information that we know, and set up a second ratio with information one quantity is known but the other is unknown, and then we'll solve the proportion. So pause the video, try it out, then come back, we'll look at the answer together. The first ratio I set up is using this information that one centimeter equals 1.65 miles on the map. Be cautious here, even though we see that these two quantities are equal to each other, they actually belong in the numerator and denominator of one fraction, not on opposite sides of the equal sign when we write the proportion. So one centimeter equals 1.65 miles becomes one ratio in this proportion. The other one we'll set up using the 3.2 centimeters and an x4 are unknown. Make sure that the numerators and denominators have corresponding units. So in this case, our second fraction needs to have centimeters up in the numerator with miles in the denominator. We know 3.2 centimeters, but the x is unknown number of miles. Solving this proportion, diagonally one way, 1 times x is 1x. Multiplying diagonally the other way, 1.65 times 3.2 equals 5.28. And we really don't even have to divide both sides by 1. We should know 1x is the same as just x. So we have our answer. x is 5.28. x represented the actual distance on the map in miles. The actual distance is 5.28 miles. Here's another example. The ratio of men to women in an applicant group to a college is 13 to 17. If there are 2,160 total applicants, how many are women? Let's set up our first ratio with the relationship that we know. 
this ratio of men to women, 13 to 17. I'll just jot down our units here, men in the numerator, women in the denominator. Setting up our second ratio, I'm looking to use this quantity 2,160. But this number represents the total applicants, not just the men or just the women. So where does 2,160 belong in our other ratio, numerator or denominator? Well, we have a bit of a problem with our units. My advice in this case is to look at what we would use in our second ratio. This last sentence, if there are 2,160 total applicants, how many are women? This tells me I should use a ratio that has women in one place and total applicants in the other. Perhaps women in the numerator, total applicants in the denominator. I know I'll be able to use the 2,160 in the denominator here and an X for the women because that's what we're trying to find. But we still don't have our units matching up. What we'll do is go back to our original ratio this 13 men for every 17 women, can we take this information and come up with a different ratio that does tell us women to total applicants? What would be our total in this group if we have 13 men and 17 women? Well, 13 plus 17 would give us a total of 30. So I can take this information and decide that we have a total of 30 applicants and now I can write a ratio that does compare women to total applicants. In this small group, we did a quick addition to find out a total of 30. 17 we know are women, so to set up this ratio of women to total now means 17 over 30. And now we can match this up in a proportion with x over 2160. Let's solve this proportion. Multiplying diagonally one way, we get 30x. Multiplying diagonally the other way, 17 times 2,160 equals 36,720. Finish solving for x, we're dividing both sides by 30, gives us x equals 1,224. So when we are looking at this group where there are 2,160 total applicants, there are 1,224 women in that group. Here's a problem for you to try that is similar to that last example. Pause the video, go through this problem, and then restart, we'll look through the answer. In this problem, I first identified a fraction I could set up with the known information and that was using that there are two pieces of rotten fruit for every seven pieces of fresh fruit. Looking at the next sentence, the information there is, is using 621 pieces of total fruit and asking how many of those were rotten. The ratio that I'd like for my second fraction should use rotten fruit and total fruit, just looking at what information is given in this last sentence. So I'm going back to our original piece that there are two rotten f pieces of fruit for every seven pieces of fresh fruit. Can I figure out the total number of fruit in this group? Well, two plus seven, nine. Now can I use this information to set up a ratio of rotten fruit to total fruit? And I think we can. We'll use the two rotten fruit out of the nine total. And now we'll write our other fraction which is x rotten fruit, an unknown how many rotten fruit, out of this larger group 621 total pieces. We'll multiply diagonally one way, get 9x. Multiplying diagonally the other way, 2 times 621 equals 1,242. Finish solving for x, we'll divide both sides by 9, leads us to x equals 138. So our final answer for this problem, out of the 621 total pieces of fruit, there were 138 pieces of rotten fruit.